There's a lot riding on this match. That $16,000 price right bar. Right before we start, because now we're in that character selection and we're just about to begin things, Hayate, the fact that he's here right now, he's the only player remaining in this tournament that did not have an extremely comfortable way making it into Championship Sunday. That's true. Yeah, That's here true. he is. Top four. Conqueror, Tekken Master, and Foxy, very dominant to earn their place. Hayate down to the final moments to earn his spot he was this close to not even making it yet here he is in top four no doubt his team is incredibly proud of him and he will be proud of himself as we now begin game number one here car on ship sub-zero and a fujin now conqueror and hayate they did play in the group stages we did see hayate he did swap out the needle for the wind push instead as this is yep the sub-zero matchup does call for it the character can punish needle consistently that's where the push will come in for hayate that really has been his kind of two main variations that Arsenal and Skywalker as that kind of real shell of the way he plays. And then it's needle and push based on what's going on. And that, you know, the last time they played, Conqueror was able to win quite convincingly. So that was a two out of three, however. Now we're going to three out of five. And there's that corner play, Hayate. Such a good use of that Skywalk. There's the pickup. Down Ooh, one wind good kick. Good I mean, that down one wind kick was a good option anyway. Because remember, folks, oh. wind, we don't see it all the time, but that is Fujin's armor breaker. Now Conqueror actually... I think opting not to expend the KB there. He had enough hits for it. They decided to save it. Oh, oh at the round down. Yep. And there's the unbreakable jump to win kick. No getting out of that one. That's all good damage. And Hayate able to seal the deal in that first round. Good job, Conqueror. He didn't spend that crushing blow after all. Would, would have been completely wasted. Oh, trying, trying to win. Back two, just not quite hitting its mark. However, this corner pressure of Conqueror. Everything he does is safe to jumping. That's what I really like about the way he applies it. The standing three, the standing one, the late back two, whatever it is. So hard to jump out against him as now Hayate trying to be tricky. Ooh. There's the mix. I mean, you expect the amplify. He just doesn't do anything and then presses the button. It's so cheeky, but hey, look, it's a Fujin thing. Oh, but the counter hit confirmed. Not going to matter counter hit necessarily, but Conqueror seeing it hit regardless. I take back here again, but finds his way out at forward three. Able to get out of the corner, and there's another hit, but no meter. Won't need it, though. Has that fatal blow. He's got a bar spam. Don't get hit. That is the golden rule right now, my friends. Do not get hit. There's the counter of the one-two. Looking to be real oh. sneaky. But it's that air to air conqueror. Taking the slide just to be nice and safe. One round apiece. The important thing though is that Hayate, you know, he went for that unbreakable jump two into wind kick in round one. So he's still got the fatal blow now. He he's been able to save that super important resource. However, talking of resources, I mean, conqueror mustard. He's got everything. He's got the crushing blows. He's got his fatal blow his own. Oh, what oh. an anti-air from Hayate. A wow. quick wave dash into an instant jump two. And there's the confirm again. And there's the wind kick. Yep, trying to keep it unbreakable. Hayate just getting as much lead as possible. And now look at the look movement. At the movement. Hayate is just gliding across the screen right now. And an empty jump. Really trying to bait out those force blocks from Conqueror. You want to deal with my jump in? I want you to try. At the anti -air. Yes, Hayate. Absolutely. Conqueror. Out of nowhere. And there's a bar. Breakaway has to come out. And now Conqueror put against the wall. Quite a comeback to make here. Here's Fatal Blow, Sub-Zero. Definitely known for these kind of comebacks, but... Oh, hang on a minute. This this might be the start of it. I'd say a trade, but is it really a trade if your push does no damage? Conqueror. <gasps> Can he mix? Hang this is on the corner. Oh, the instant jump. wake up. Yep. Hayate calling that late jump out completely. With the instant jump there himself on wake up. I respect that as well, because back to the wall, Conqueror had that kind of knockdown. A perfect opportunity to start one of those many Sub-Zero comebacks that we've seen, right? Round three Sub-Zero, quite the menace. When he hasn't used 1-2-4, when he hasn't used Fatal Blow, you never know. Hayate able to stop things before it got a little bit too crazy. Empty jump down one. He's showing a lot of respect to the anti-air potential of Conqueror. Conqueror, the dashing back one, didn't fully believe in it, though. Just doing the single button on its own. Wake up up three. Give me that turn back. Oh, but oh. another hit. No, no confirm into Ice Ball this time. Conqueror. A rare miss to confirm into optimal damage. It would get a big jump in there, though. Final subs here again. Conqueror. And another grab attempt scouting out by Hayate. It's a good combo as well. Decent damage. Just shy of 400. Enough to almost even things out. That's a perfect way of bringing yourself back into a round that was going sour. Hayate mixing up when he does the Skywalk so much. Mixing oh. up on the way as well. That's going to be a catch. Full combo. 
not amplifying the slide though. Conqueror does not want to lose corner positioning. Now that was just a hard read for Hayate. Massively punishable. The wind kick. You don't see it a lot with Fujin because players like the needle, but that move is very, very unsafe. But we're seeing it again though. Conqueror really not playing around the slide Ooh. amplifier at all. He never seems to have that crushing blow, but he doesn't seem to play around it at all or need it. Really much more content to just find anything into a standard combo. Big neutral jump. That was a real read there. And a half. Keeping breakaway safe as well, Hayate. I mean, I'll tell you one of the main reasons Conqueror doesn't ever seem to really use the slide KB is because his meter in a combo comes from the amp ice, not the slide at the end. And in this situation, when he lands it and he wants to side switch, that, no, that seems to be the only way we see him amplify the slide is if he gets one raw. Oh, hello. Looks like Conqueror is much more content to spend the bar on the initial ice ball than it is the uh, slide at the end. Oh, oh. no. Teeth shattered out. And that's going to be a one, two, four ender. Yep. Oh, oh my God. God. Almost 500 damage for a big throw read. And that's it, right? You throw for 130 damage. That's what happens if it doesn't go well. And that is the eternal back and forth of throws in this game. And again, Conqueror. Conqueror getting the game, but kind of gives himself a, almost looks like a disapproving kind of head tilt. Again, Conqueror holding himself to that massive high standard and I mean, I, it's working for him, right? If he's kind of constantly beating himself up for any and all mistakes he makes, even when he wins, he's kind of like, not good enough. Got to win better. And then it goes to the next match. Yo, Sub-Zero versus Fujin, by the way. MK Mythology, stage two. Hold the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> Get stuck for like two hours because you can't figure out how to beat him at the end. So Hayate really playing around that Skywalk again. Really trying to play it safe. Yeah, Fujin, a character very capable of going crazy. But Hayate knows when it's time to turn the crazy up and when to keep it minimum. Right now, he's got a good lead. We'll see but how quickly the lead. these leads can just disappear thanks to one yeah. uppercut. Don't like throw. Said, Whatever you do, be don't a lead throw. That Hayate really wants to stick with Mustard because it's a factor of Sub-Zero. His ability to get that back to into Skywalk every single time. Empty jump grab. Lovely tech there by Conqueror, but he gets clipped. But there will be a corner confirmed now for Hayate. Doesn't need the meter in this situation. Can he take the round though? You can never count out Sub Zero, least of all a Sub Zero of Conqueror's caliber. Looking for the anti air, no one home. Gets the jump in though, that's a clean round one at the end for the Canadian. And this has been a pretty back and forth match. Can't say I'm too surprised though. Now, this is exactly what we expected. Losers top four, winner of this makes losers finals against Foxy. One step closer to the lion's share of that $60,000 prize pot. Definitely all to play for here. And Hayate, nice push. Get that full screen again. Oh, both bars spent on the push. Leaving Hayate pretty starved for bar in other areas. But a lead is a lead. Oh, the stuff. Hayate with the... That had to be a buffer as well. And oh, the micro duck. Hayate is playing on some next level stuff right now. That confirm off the 4-3 into the meatless tornado. This is knowledge. From max range as well. Like It looked like a buffer. It looked like a buffer to me. Like He's doing it from that distance. If it hits, it will work. That is the optimization. Ooh. And again, don't throw! You have to hold yourself back so much. Every part of your being just says, I have to throw. It's my only way back in, but I, I actually feel like we have seen more throws result in disaster for the person doing it than throws actually result in like a full comeback. We're just not seeing it. They're so risky, especially now in the offline environment again, right? Where you can let go of block at just the, the last moment when you feel like a throw might come. And if it happens, you have so long to see that it's whiffed and conquering output and quite a miserable scenario. One game away facing elimination, but by no means out. But this is a, a scary position to be in. Hi, Ete. You know, we did say going into the set playing better the longer the tournament goes on. I feel like he's even yet to reach that potential, right? And now we're starting to see those forward threes turned into clutch launchers. We're seeing conversions out of nowhere. Hayate is progressing to get better and better and does not seem to be done yet. But I mean, Hayate, he's, he's turned up today to give it his 100,000%. But with what's on the line, the fact that this is not just for winning a tournament, right? This is the, the, the first major offline Mortal Kombat tournament we've seen in some time. And I think everyone wants to win it. Especially when you're this close, you can see just how close to the end of the marathon you are. After so many days, right, the group stages, the grueling matches they had to play. Hayate, is, you know, especially seeing that he spent most of the group stages being severely down in games. Now, you know, fast forward the clocks a couple of days, 
And this is a matchup he had to play there, right? Conqueror is able to defeat him quite convincingly in the group stages. But here we are. I mean, if this was a best of three, like the group stages, Haite would have won. Just goes to show the difference a couple days can make. Wow, the pickup from the down one. Fujin doesn't really have a particularly amazing Ooh. down one, so that's not a bad confirm at all. I would say Conqueror. Conqueror letting. I gotta say, Conqueror letting rip those kind of uppercuts from that range. This this might be showing nerves of Conqueror getting in, and there's quite a late breakaway. Conqueror definitely playing with fire. And oh the my Skywalker god! The knowledge, the matchup knowledge of Hayate to avoid that creeping ice. We saw Ava do something similar, and now Hayate with that Skywalk, the clutchness unrivaled in this tournament and now Hayate what better Wait, way yeah, than that to get a match point yep, this, yep that was escape failed we're going up now Hayate getting more dangerous the opportunity for the rematch of Foxy Grandpa something Hayate would happily go into how close it was when they last fought however you know, I'm talking but like I can guarantee you know, Hayate is going to want that too Hayate is going to be more than happy to get that run back but we uh -oh. need Conqueror. He's not done yet. He has the corner again. Good overhead Nick. now. Yep, he dedicated. This is Conqueror turning up the speed. Now, what can Hayate bring from this? There's the cancel. He knows the button press comes out. There's that back one. Optimal, we're going to see it. No, he drops it. That's optimal damage. But Hang on a minute. going to get the fatal blow. No, he drops, but no punish. Conqueror was thrown a lifeline that he was not able to take. I think, been an easy the armor break. I think he was looking for the armor break there, Mustard. That's why it was a weird timing. He's looking for it again. There's the final hit. The clean jump in for Conqueror and Hayate. That, that, no. So that was a lifeline to end all lifelines there for Conqueror. Because Hayate, whether he went for an armor break read and deliberately did the fatal blow late because of it, or if he tried to combo into it, the important thing is that it didn't work. They got blocked and Conqueror missed the punish at that health. That could have just meant the end. Oh, the side switch, so clutch. But Conqueror Man, was able to find it from Conqueror since Liga Latina last year, actually. <laughs> That's a nice bit of nostalgia there for me, but there's that back one once more, Hayate. Mixing it up. A little bit of damage. Remember, the wind push on its own does no damage. It's the amplify that does the damage. I see not being picked for the damage oh either. God. Yep, a pick up. And the meaty, that might be it. Maximum damage. There's the three. Restand. No, going for the wind kick. I like this. Oh, but the missed time sweep. Can he get mixed all the way? Never mind. Conqueror. He cashes out on damage early. He hasn't used the 124 if memory serves, so he's still going to have some pretty important KBs that could win the game for him. But there's defensive bar Hayate. He does have one more chance. But will he even come to it? If he hits anything, yep. The late amplify. And a win push Max. from Max Range. And that is Hayate. why you have other moves ready. Hayate. Yeah, he's going to be happy with that one. The adjustment. Conqueror, who was able to defeat him a few days ago, is now going to get the run back. All these days later, the wind push. That's why it's important, right? You might get super comfortable with one loadout of variation. There might be a matchup that calls for the opposite. And Hayate, with that wind push to clutch things out at the very end,